Hello, I'm Daniel, and welcome to the Immuno Project. We here at the Immuno Project are continuing in our series of videos uh, with respect to information, guidance, uh, education, and uh, the last video I did, we were talking about the events leading up to um, uh, Moses breaking the, um, the tablets of the Ten Commandments and the sin of the Chet Egel, the sin of the golden calf. And um, I'm reminded uh, of the passage in uh, chapter 32 of the book of Exodus, uh, verse 17, um, when Joshua and uh, Moses uh, meet and they're talking. And uh, Moses is saying, what's all this uh, noise I'm hearing? And Joshua says, oh, well, it's uh, the cry of battle. And, you know, and Moses says, I don't think so. This, uh, this is a sound of distress. Now, in, in the Talmud, the Jerusalem Talmud, in Tanis, uh, Chazal uh, presents us with a, with a view that's going on, um, like a dialogue that ensues uh, during this period. And uh, Moses is saying to himself, is this guy, is Joshua, who will eventually lead the Jewish people into the Holy Land. He can't tell the difference between uh, different sounds. I mean, it's hard to believe that, that Moses would be criticizing uh, him for, because he couldn't recognize the details of sounds. After all, they were still on the mountain. They were far away from the camp. Um, it gives almost the impression at first that he's like impatient. Uh, with Joshua. Uh, Joshua knew very well exactly what was going on in the camp. He knew about the Chet Egel, he knew about the golden calf, or the, and what, um, what he was, he felt that the sound, which he described as getting ready for battle, he thought this was the sound of licentious behavior and idolatry and people rejoicing in abandoning God. According to the Yerushalmi, the Jerusalem Talmud, Moses, who was much more sensitive and more in tune to the nature of the Jewish people, he said, this is not a joy and a celebration of idolatry. This is not people rejoicing. These are people who are in the grips of sorrow. Uh, they felt they were abandoned by God. And um, in their turning to uh, a golden calf, in doing something that, was, that they knew was wrong, this was the sound of their hearts breaking, their spirits uh, shattering, their souls in grief. And um, it shows that in order for someone to be a leader, this shows Joshua, in order for someone to be a leader, they have to be very sensitive to their flock and what they're going through. And when Moses came down and saw the people engaging in idolatry, he knew, as I referred to in, a, in the previous video, he knew that they were teetering on the edge of the abyss and he needed to do something. He needed a shock treatment. And that, according to some views, that is why he broke the luchas. Well, that's why he broke the, uh, the tablets uh, of the Ten Commandments. Something so severe needed to happen, just like a slap in the face to, to wake them up. And it worked. Um, but the main point that I want to stress with respect to the Rishalmi's, uh, uh view in Tanis uh, was that you have to be aware of the mood of the people. If you're a leader, if you're a leader of the Jewish people, if you're a leader of a congregation, if you're a, the, the leader of Noahides, you have to be sensitive to the mood and the feelings and the sufferings and the joy of your flock. Um, you have to develop 
develop that sem uh, sensitivity if you want to be uh, successful. Moses was showing Joshua that um, what he perceived as, as uh, revelry and debauchery were maybe the symptoms of something much more severe, uh, something much more heart-wrenching. And it required a sympathy, not a derision. Uh, we're going to be doing more videos along these lines. Please come back. Please watch. Please learn. And until next time, on behalf of the Imuna Project, I'm Daniel, and thank you too much.